Welcome back to GA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. I'm delighted to be joined here by Conor McKenna to run through the weekend's football and hurling action. Certainly, a lot of action to run through, a lot of discussing points, a lot of talking points. Obviously, Derry's big win over Monaghan. We'll be running through that. We run through the Dublin game. Obviously, Limerick's narrow win, of course, uh, over Tipperary to book themselves into a, a Munster final. And we'll be touching on the weekend's uh, hurling action a little bit as well towards the end. Uh, just a reminder, we're brought to you by Declan Kirby, GA star, the best uh, children's GA book out there in the market at the minute. You can check it out on Easton's, Amazon, and in the description down below. So make sure you go ahead and do that when you get a chance. Connor, how's things? How is it? Right, yeah, I'm not too bad now. Not too bad. I mean, Dublin, uh, Dublin recorded a, a big victory against me at the weekend which is uh becoming the norm really at this stage it's kind of like a, you know an annual day of the year it's nearly like a bank holiday at this stage but uh yeah i'll, I'll go to myself now yeah that's good yeah no it's a good weekend of action so hopefully we'll run through it there and summarize as best we can absolutely absolutely well i suppose we'll start off with the uh with the Derry game Derry 312 monaghan 17 points huge huge result for Derry. i mean we were obviously chatting uh couple of weeks ago when they recorded that big big win over Tyrone and now they've gone and beat Monaghan as well so I mean to beat Tyrone to beat Monaghan Derry really really are asserting themselves not just as contenders for Ulster but contenders for the All-Ireland in my opinion yeah well I watched this game yesterday I think it was a good enough game of football very intense it was a real Ulster championship feel to it real crowd really caved in on the game in the second half Monaghan especially when they were bringing their energy it was a similar type of Monaghan performance to the second half of last year's Ulster final where they were chasing the game despite being well behind at half time. Derry showed very good resilience in the second half. They should have wrapped up the game a bit quicker. They were definitely the better team. I thought they were 10 points the better team despite the four point win in margin. They let Monaghan way back into the game too much, to be honest with you. I think the goals Derry took, they were ruthless. There was a clear plan that they were going to take goals and they have very good finishers. And I think what we're seeing here is a real serious, serious football team in Derry. It's a very, very similar type of team to the Donegal team that Rory Gallagher coached in 2011. We're looking at a team that could really, really be an Ireland contender and is on the cusp of something really, really special, I think, to be honest with you. I saw like, the team yesterday. Chrissy McKay, again, was excellent for Derry in, in cornerback. Brendan Rodgers was excellent. Oren Lynch had a great game in the goals. Do you know Garrett McInnes, again, very, very good. I thought Conor Glass was exceptional in the midfield. I think he really reads the game very well. He'll have better games, but he really has a great understanding of perceiving. He reads the game. could see him anticipating situations that you wouldn't really have seen other players do, you know, and very... Very cool head as well. And Shane McWigan, very good game. From the Benny Heron, I suppose, a player that is probably wouldn't have been one of Derry's best known players, but he was excellent yesterday, took the goal. And they have really good teams on the bench. And we're looking definitely at a team that it could, in my opinion, are probably should be favourites to win the Ulster title. And like if they do that, they'll have beaten three of the eight teams in Division 1 for next year. So that'll be a really, really serious achievement for, for Rory Gallagher and the Derry players. 100%, yeah. I mean, uh, you're obviously mentioning there the, the similarities to this Derry team. With that Donegal side, obviously that you know won the All Ireland in in twenty twelve, and obviously Rory Gallagher very much the second hand man to to Jim McGuinness. So I mean, and you look at this Derry side, you see the similarities in the way that they play, the way that they set up. There is a bit of kick passing in there as well, so there is probably a bit more variation than that Donegal side. But at the same time, like it does seem like Jim McGuinness two point oh, and people forget like when Jim McGuinness took over Donegal in 2011. Like, Donegal were, were very much sort of in the doldrums really back then. Like, they were they were kind of a bit like Derry, you know. They, 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 needed a, they needed a couple of years really before they could build up. And, you know, who's to say, like, fair enough, maybe this is Rory Gallagher's version of 2011. I'm not sure. But, you know, you're looking at this Derry side and I really do think they are, as you said, you know, serious, serious all other contenders now. They have to be after being two of the, the top teams in the country. Yeah, and I think another similarity to that Donegal team, it's actually an identical team in some ways because Derry had done very well at underage like Donegal. And I think Mer Michael Murphy hit the crossbar to win an all Ireland under-21 title the year before McGuinness took the job. And that Dublin team contained a lot of absolute superstars that were the fulcrum of the six-in-a-row team. Do you know? So I think Derry, like, I think in Conor Glass, you have a player like Michael Murphy who was a real leader in the dressing room, a command and figure. The game goes through him, everything. I think Shane McGuigan is probably a type of similar type of player to Paddy McBrearty and Colin McFadden who were stars in that team. And, I think the likes of Brendan Rodgers and Chrissy McKay, they love me saying this, but I think they're very similar players to the two McGee's, Neil McGee and Eamon McGee, you know, like, and they've been playing against mm -hmm. her in the final, a lot of those players, but it's a very, very similar team to the Donegal team that won it, like, you know, like, it's it's not, it's not a, it's not a bad comparison at all, and it's a real, I suppose, we have an identical man on the sideline both times as well, you know, and Rory Gallagher, I think yesterday, proving what everyone would, would already know in the first football circles, that he's an absolutely excellent coach, I think he's a real top, top coach, and, like, if he can win this Ulster title with Derry, he'll be probably one of the best managers 
I won't say of all time, but certainly in, at the moment, one of the best managers in the country. You no know, type of way, he's a real highly regarded manager. They did work wonders in Fermanagh and is doing wonders here, you know. And I suppose Derry really as a whole have a lot to be positive about. And Monaghan yesterday, I honestly think people might disagree. I think they were just beaten by the better team. I think Monaghan, if you look at the players they have, if you add up the ability of all the players, the collective results of the team probably outperforms how good the players are. They're really an exceptional county in that sense. They punch way above their weight yesterday. I think you might disagree. People might. Disagree. I think it was just a case that just weren't good enough to be honest with you. Or you know, type of weight as on yesterday. I think Derry just showed more composure. They would probably made better decisions on the ball. Might have been set up a bit better as well. And it was just Derry were just a better team around. Yeah, like they, they kicked what 10 11 points in the second half. I, I thought Monaghan played quite well in the second half. Maybe in the first half they they took a while to get going and maybe they were they were stifled a little bit by this uh by this Derry side, maybe in a similar fashion to um to that we've seen of Tyrone. Sir Klopp was saying here Derry on a roll might be the momentum that gets them over the line. Donegal will be the, the hardest task yet. So I mean, what do you reckon? Would you fancy them going up against Donegal? There's obviously a bit of a a backstory there as well, like Rory Gallagher going up against his uh, his former team that he was obviously a part of in 2012 that he managed as well. And of course, things didn't really work out for him then. But, you know, would, would you be fancying Derry at this moment in time? Yes, I would, to be black and white. I think that Gallagher, he's made, like he's the first manager to get to the Ulster final with three different counties. Now, he's also lost three of those finals. He would not want to lose four finals. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a good record. But he's done, like, to be fair to him, they were very unlucky to lose both finals, Donegal and we're, probably had for Manor really at the maximum that final in 2018 so I wouldn't hold that against him at all or put it as a black winner's record by any stretch but yeah at the moment Derry very much would fancy them I think Donegal last year when they played Derry now it's very rare I'd say this but the better team lost that match Derry were definitely the better team in Paddy Buffet last year and now to be fair to be, to be fair to Donegal Michael Murphy wasn't fit that day he came on for the last 20 minutes and made a big difference but he wasn't fully fit this year he is fully fit it gives Donegal a fully fit Michael Murphy I would say would probably be worth about an extra seven points to Donegal. Now, to be fair, that game was in Bally Buffet. They're very hard to beat in Bally Buffet, but have Derry improved by five, six, seven points from last year? In my opinion, yes. Have Donegal improved from last year? I think they have improved. Maybe not. Yeah, I think that Donegal aren't getting probably enough credit. They would played okay in the league. They won a good few matches. I think they might have ended up finishing third in the table in the league. So they weren't that far off in the league. Have they improved? It'll be very close. It's probably the two best teams in the province, but at the moment, I fancy Derry. Yeah, it's a hard one to know really with Donegal because they have had some big performances, as you said, but they probably had some underwhelming performances in there as well. So they are kind of a hard one to judge. Ushin says, although Derry's play style is more defensive, it's still a very attractive style of football. I don't mind watching. And that is the point, isn't it? Because the way they break at pace as well, like in the forward runners with Garrett McKinless and obviously Kieran McFell, who wasn't a part of the Derry side this time around, where you, you've seen sort of the work that he was doing back in the in the league as well and you know when they're bringing Ethan Doherty forward and these lads I mean it is highly entertaining and you know there's a lot of counties I think that won't want to get Derry um you know in an all quarter quarterfinal or potentially even beyond but I think Conor Glass is an exceptional player I think he's probably the one player that could really be the difference and he mm -hmm. was very good out in Australia I think since he came back here he's going to make a huge difference and I think he could be he could be the one player that could really get Derry over the line like he came back for Glenn and Mahara there last year they won the Derry Championship probably in my opinion, could have won the All-Ireland. They probably would feel they should have beaten Kirkou in the Ulster semi-final, you know. But, yeah, it's a really runners from deep places. Conor Doherty, Gary McInnes are very good players as well. And Ethan Doherty yesterday was excellent. I think they're it's a very, very well-tuned final balance side. 100%, yeah. And it'll be interesting most definitely to see... Uh who Monaghan get in the in the qualifiers as well because certainly I think a lot of counties although you know Monaghan have you know, they were beaten quite comfortably you certainly wouldn't want to uh, be playing them in the opening round of the qualifiers it was Dublin 127 Mead 114 in the uh, semi-finals of the Leinster Championship I mean a game really that was over really after about four or five minutes and obviously it was joking around a little bit at the start of the stream there about Dublin's big win but to be honest you know you miss the days of a big Dublin and Mead rivalry and it would have been great to see this be a competitive game because you know I don't really think it does anyone any favours really like Dublin are still none the wiser in terms of some defensive issues in there they weren't really tested that much Mead have obviously taken another huge beat and going into going into the qualifiers now but what were your thoughts on uh, on this game? Well I suppose just first things first the Dublin probably looked very very good very efficient in the first half and it was a perfect performance for them really in some ways to really get the job done but I suppose look look at the record. We're going to look at bare facts here. The last four years Dublin Media played in Championship, three of those games have been a walkover for Dublin. They haven't even got a test. Do you know, 
last year they got half a test for the second half, but took over 12 points up at half time. So just me would want to have a serious look at themselves because I just don't think that's good enough from a me perspective. Now, Dublin were exceptional. Dublin, I thought the Dublin bench yesterday on paper did not look anywhere near as strong as previous those benches. I thought if Mead had kept in the game, they might have had half a chance, but Mead was just very, very poor. And Dublin won, they were good. I think now a lot of Dublin fans would disagree, but Dublin have won two matches playing good football, but they've learned nothing. Right? I think that Dublin have learned very, very little from those two games. And I think Kerry, I think Jack O'Connor, it was the perfect result for Kerry yesterday. They're sitting in the long grass. The hype was all on Kerry. Now the hype is back on Dublin. The pressure is suddenly on Dublin. Kerry are in a Munster final against Limerick, which they're going to win. And they're going in there under no pressure. They're way, like, the pressure will be on. The talk is all about Dublin again. That, 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 that's exactly what Kerry need to be. And Kerry were very, very good, I thought, down in Cork. They won by 12 points away from home. Dublin won by 13 at home yesterday. I beat. It was a very, very comfortable victory. So, yeah, all in all, Dublin, it was a job done and move on. But it's not a game that's going to be remembered by anyone for any time, any time soon. I, I just think if there's going to be any sort of debate on Dublin's resources or anything like that, it has to be also factored in how poor Mead were and how underwhelming the record has been, both against Leinster and non-Leinster teams in the league and championship in recent times. I think that's one thing that has to be said as well, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like it was, it was very comprehensive from Dublin. Make no mistake about that. And as you said, we we definitely haven't learned too much. But I think what we maybe have learned from a Dublin perspective is that there was a lot of talk in the league, maybe about the the bench players maybe not being quite at the level yet. And you have to remember that Lorcan O'Dell, Lee Gannon, these lads had only just come up from the under twenties. Like it's obviously going to take them time. It's going to take time for them to get inter or sort of sort of integ integrated into the into the league into the team throughout the league and. You see, you know, I thought Lee Gannon was very good yesterday. I thought Lorcan O'Dell had a very good game as well. So you are starting to see, even with Dublin's players that you know they they have fit now and all merch and Conor Callaghan, that there is they are starting to get more options. And maybe it mightn't be as good as a Kerry in terms of their panel, but they're not too far away. Maybe not as far as away as people thought when they got relegated. Yeah, I'd say Dublin now. <laughs> What would concern me very much from a Dublin point of view now, and this is absolutely no disrespect to Monaghan, but Dublin went to Cl Clones and lost that game in the absence of Conor McManus. Do you know what kind of way? And Monaghan yeah. were the better team. Do you know? So I thought Dublin, I just don't see where the hype is coming. They came eighth place in an eight team group in Division One. Do you know? And they've beaten two very bad teams, and suddenly people think they're going to be Kerry again. Now they have a very good side, but I just think Kerry were exceptional in the league. They were exceptional for the last two years in football, and Barron won very unlucky to play against Throne Barron. Two actually one point defeat against Throne. So I just don't know has the balance shifted that far back towards Dublin that people think they're going to be Kerry again. I just I just don't see it on a personal I just don't, don't understand where this is coming from because Dublin have played two matches against very mediocre opposition with no disrespect, like you know, and like I just mm -hmm. don't see where people are getting like just the whole thing about coming eighth in the league is suddenly forgotten. Now granted, Conor Callahan has made a big difference to the team and he is an exceptional player, but I just don't know where people why people are getting carried away with Dublin after those two results, to be honest, on a personal level. Yeah, I think probably the main reason, really, I think a lot of people probably look at this Dublin team and remember, obviously, the six all Orleans in a row, remember coming through Kerry, remember coming through Mayo. And obviously, there has been retirements, there has been some players that have opted out. The main spine of the team is still there somewhat. Like, you still have Brian Fenton, you still have James McCarthy, Mick Fitzsimons, Con O'Callaghan, Dean Rock, all these types of lads. Obviously, they've maybe gotten a little older in the, in the last year, in particular, Dean Rock, for example, but... At the same time, yeah, like I agree with you as well. Like as a Dublin fan, I'm definitely not getting too carried away because, you know, even when we put those two wins together in the league against Tyrone and Donegal, like I wasn't getting carried away then because there is still clear defensive issues and you did see it at times in this game as well. Like Jordan Morris had an early goal chance. Um, and you see Mead when they were floating long balls in there, they were certainly causing problems. So like, how, how do you think Kildare will go about that game against the Dubs? Like, will they be more fearful now, having seen um, Dublin in these last two games, or will they fancy their chances? And obviously, we'll discuss them. Well, I suppose we'll start discussing them now, I suppose. <laughs> but I suppose just before we go on to Kildare, just the one thing, Aaron, is Dublin have dominated Leinster at an absolute cakewalk for the last 18, 17 years since Westmead won in 2004, bar one free field against Mead. And... Last year was the first year that Dublin got anywhere close, but like I suppose they went from being winning matches again by seven, six, and eight points, I think, to win like instead of winning by 26 or 27 in a lot of cases. But this year they're getting back to the level they were pre last year. So I think while they've improved from last year, I think that the fact they're dominating Leinster is nothing to be getting carried away at. They did that, they've done that for 17 years, like so. I just don't see, I just I wouldn't be getting too carried away, but just going back on Kildare, Kildare. Had a good win yesterday. They probably would have liked to win by a bit more, but Westmead did the credit, didn't give in, and they kept going to the end, you know. But Kildare would be pleased enough. 
are they going to be Dublin? I don't think so. Have they a chance? They probably do, but I think Dublin will will, will be left in another title. But I suppose Kildare, just to talk about them, they're probably in a position now where they didn't they got to one Leinster final in twelve years between two thousand and nine and two thousand and twenty. There were twelve seasons. This year they've got to two in a row. So I think I always said Kildare their challenge was to establish themselves as the second best team in Leinster before they could establish themselves as the best. They weren't the second best team in Leinster for years. Me, to be fair, were getting to more finals. Kildare might have been playing better football and capable of causing shock, but it was me who were getting to those finals, you know. So Kildare now are, in my opinion, definitely the second best team in Leinster, do you know. And when you're the mm. second best team in Leinster, you can push on to be the best. And I think it's a similar analogy with Galway and Hurling. I think Galway have to dominate Leinster and start winning Leinster before you can start winning All-Ireland. Do you know the kind of way, do you know. To be the best team in Len- so Kildare now they've achieved that. Are they going to give Dublin a game? I think they'll give them a game, and I think you now this is being not being patron, but I think they'd, they'd, I'd be very surprised if Dublin won at an ease. I think Dublin would probably, I'd say it'll definitely be single figures, Aaron. I'd be very surprised if Dublin won by ten points or more, and but I do think that Dublin will will definitely be lifting the the Lady Cup come or the Leinster Championship come the come the come whatever Saturday week or Sunday week whenever it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose a word I made maybe before we we finish up on them, like you had Andy McIntyre's obviously comments after the game again. Like I I just feel like he's such a sore loser to be honest. I feel like any time his teams get beat, he's always going mad and in, in interviews. And again, you know, he's obviously talking about Lee Gannon rolling around after. And look, maybe maybe he did a little bit, but to be fair, I do think it was a, a blatant red card. And I think that that's how it goes. And it's silly really from Jordan Morris because he's going to miss now the the opening round of the qualifiers, but. What were your thoughts on on Mead in general? Like they they you can clearly see they've plenty of good players and plenty of talent, but they just seem to be whether it's mentality or mental issues, confidence. They just don't seem to be quite at the races at all when they play Dublin. Look, it's a hard enough time for the Mead players. We're not going to be too harsh. I'm probably harsh enough from there earlier on, but I just think Aaron, it's one of those years where Mead the qualifiers. Do I see them making any impact in the qualifiers? No, they might win a match if they get a favourable draw, but they're not going to go anywhere in reality. Do you know they're like so? I think this year. It's probably all about for me just get the year over with and regroup and plan for next year and see what went wrong, you know. Yeah, and it was killed there at one twenty one, uh Westmead two fifteen. Well, I suppose as a Westmead man yourself, I mean it was definitely a lot closer maybe than than people expected. I was keeping an eye on it throughout the, the first half watching it on GA go and Westmead they, they they rallied quite late on because I remember Kildare were quite far away and then Westmead pulled it back maybe late on. But um what was your sort of assumption on this one? Yeah, no, I think it was a good enough performance from Westmead. Definitely, there was a, they said it was going to be losing by three points beforehand. I don't think anyone would be getting too disheartened. You know, the Westmead have made a lot of progress this year and last year, probably, but it hasn't probably been seen with results, to be fair. But the other lads there are tagging along nicely. You know, they have a nice group of players and an honest enough bunch now at the moment. You know, and I think they'll be very, very um, close to winning the Talton Cup. I think I definitely fancy them to take leash in the open round and go from there. But I think Westmead, I think the Talton Cup run would do the world good for Westmead. I think Jack Cooley, the manager, was. Very positive after Jack is a very good fella, very decent man, and they're in it for the right reasons as well. So I think Westmead, look, all in all, it's 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 a good enough performance yesterday. Now the results you're never going to accept a defeat, obviously say it's a good result. But I think Aaron just <laughs> not to be going too royal on it, but I think if, if Westmead had drawn Mead yesterday, I think they'd be planning for a Leinster final. Do you know kind of way? I think that they, they would probably be the third best team in Leinster at the moment. The last two seasons, maybe arguably, you know, they could have beaten Kildare. I think they, they lost by two and three points respectively the last two years. I'd be I think last year. They're probably a lot closer to winning than, than yesterday. But on the other hand, then Kildare have improved lots this last year. So though all in all, Westmead, yeah, be relatively pleased with the performance level and you'd be relatively optimistic heading into the Titan Cup, you know. Yeah, and Sir Klopp was saying here as well, Kildare have been doing great work laying the foundations at underage. Both football and hurling will pay off like it is for Derry. Expect them to win a Leinster title soon. It's a good point. I mean, they're in the, the Leinster minor final. They're actually in the, or well, I suppose they got to obviously the All-Ireland under-20 final as well, came through Leinster there as well. So first time ever that Kildare have made the uh, the Leinster final at, at all three uh, grades. So, I mean, they're clearly doing something right. Like obviously in, in Hurling, you see the development going into Kildare there at the minute as well. You obviously had Nace who done very well there at both Hurling and in football um, at club level. So, I mean, there is a lot of optimism for Kildare. They mightn't beat Dublin, but I think there is a lot of optimism there for the future. Yeah, and I suppose just one thing about Kildare this year, regardless how the Dublin game goes, they could definitely get to an honour in semi-final if the ball bounced in their favour. Because if they lost to Dublin and competed well, the qualifiers, if they won a qualifier, they'd be in an Ireland quarter-final. And if they, were on, if they avoided Kerry, they wouldn't be able to play Dublin again. And they could definitely beat the Ulster Connacht champions on their day. So Kildare are not that million miles off. They're a good enough team. Daniel Finn's a very good player. They're a very good management team in there. So they're definitely a team to watch. They played very well against Loudon. I think yesterday was 
I think yesterday, as you said to Glenn Ryan before the match, he won by three points. I say he would have accepted it. And I'd say he's happy enough on that as well. Do you know what type of way? Because it was a it was a banana skin. Westmead are not a bad team. They had a very good win against Longford and Kildare passed with with reasonable confidence. It was a one score game in the end, but Kildare, they were the better team. There's no point in the word like and it was it was a reasonable result for them without question, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And it'll, it'll certainly be intriguing to to keep an eye most definitely on that uh on that Leinster final in a in a couple of uh a couple of weeks time there was a comment there that i wanted to get up or here was if westmead can score 215 v kill there what will dublin score is what uh emmett oliver says there i mean is that maybe a worry for Kildare that they did concede 215 against westmead i mean i didn't see the majority of the game so i'm not too sure what the goals were like as such but and obviously they put loud to the to the sword but maybe the fact that they didn't put westmead away could that maybe you know, because when you see Dublin putting 127 up against Mead, like I don't think they'll be scoring that against Kildare. But you know, if they if they're as loose as defensively as what it seems by conceding something like that against Dublin, that could be a worry. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's not just probably black and white there, but then it's a different type of game. It was, I you know, it could be an open game. The final could be a bit different. You know what type of way? But yeah, the defensive work. If they concede 215 against Dublin, or like well, to concede 215 against West Mead, well. Biggest West Me fan in the world isn't going to say that Dublin haven't got better forwards at the moment. You know that way, so no one's going to dispute that. But I think they I don't think that'll overly worry them. On the other hand, like if they score 121 against Dublin, they're going to be in with a right chance to win the match. Do you know what type of way? And they missed a bit yesterday as well. So no, I wouldn't. I'd say they'll be pretty pleased enough. I wouldn't say the defensive they could work, but that's something they can work on. And yeah, I'd say they'll give Dublin a run for the money. I think where Dublin now are vulnerable, and I'm disappointed we didn't get to see yesterday. Now I know it means absolutely nothing. But I thought before the match, Dublin's bench was on paper not anywhere not fearful like and i suppose if it means anything i think mead won the second half so i suppose we now that means absolutely very very little don't get me wrong but it did show that i it doesn't prove that dublin's bench is making an improvement for them if you know what i mean you know that kind of way like when you look at kerry i suppose i'm comparing the two teams continuously but when kerry brought on the subs against cork it was that was what pulled them away you know and that used to be dublin's probably probably their their main ace in their pack was their bench well, now I think it's probably Dublin's biggest weakness, do you know? Yeah, 100%. I suppose it definitely will be something that we'll have to discover about Dublin as it goes along because there probably wasn't too much need, really, for a for a bench in the last uh, in the last two games. I suppose, touching on the uh, Munster semi-final, Limerick 2-10, Tipperary 10 points. We obviously seen brief highlights of this on the on the Sunday game, but with regards to the result as such, I mean, great work for, for Limerick and Billy Lee, a first Munster final since 2010. We all kind of know the outcome, obviously, going up against Kerry, but you can't take that away from Limerick. I mean, to obviously be clear on penalties, now beating Tipperary. I mean, obviously, since Billy Lee's been in charge, Limerick have gone from a Division 4 team to a Division 2 team. So, some clear progress being made there by Limerick. Yeah, and I think Limerick, actually, if you look, Aaron, if you were developing a platform for developing football in the county, Limerick is perfect for it. They've done exceptional work underage, and Billy Lee is a gentleman, a lovely fella, and a brilliant manager for Limerick. So, I think all in all, it's absolutely positive all around. And I think Limerick, they've after pulling away now from Chip, they've beaten them, I think, three of the last four times in 2019 and 2021 in the league and this year's championship. And the one game they lost was very, very unlucky in the 2020 Munster semi final. So Limerick, lots to be positive from. And I think that Kerry did, I think they'll give a good account of it against Kerry, but that could still be losing by 15 points and still playing well, which is daft. I think it's in Killarney. It's going to be very, very tough. I don't think Limerick Kerry have lost in Killarney since... Well, long before you and I were born, do you know the kind of Bush and Championship mm. football, Bush and Bush, um, Limerick game. Um, I think they're a team that even if they do get a bit of a beating against Kerry, I think they actually do well in the qualifiers, and they're the team that could take a scalp in the qualifier actually, and they could get to a quarter final, which would be a serious achievement, you know. Absolutely, yeah. And I suppose from a Tipperary point of view, obviously they'll be disappointed in losing. They're obviously going into the Talchian Cup. I believe they play Carlo in the in the opening game in the Talchian Cup. I mean, what would you rate Tipperary's chances going in there? I mean, obviously you have one of the best forwards in the country and Connor Sweeney, a lot of good or the talent. It's obviously a much changed team from that 2020 side that won a Munster championship. But what would you rate their chances going in there? Um, I think they'll be Carlo in a way. I don't know whether they go much further. I don't think they're contenders for the Talchian Cup, but they're not a bad county. Like and David Power is a real again. A bit like Billy Lee, he's got very, very good intentions. Jack Cooney is probably similar with me. They're very local lads who live and breathe football within the county, you know, type of way. And I suppose David Power has really done a lot of very good work for Tip Football and they're in safe hands there. And I think that they'll 
they'd be disappointed enough with the outcome of Saturday night's game. But overall, it's not been a bad year. You know, they got promoted out of Division Four and they won a championship match. You know, and it's if they can beat Carlo and go on run the Italian Cup, I'd say Tip would probably like to get to a semi final there and get to Crow Park and get to play there. That would be very good for Tip again. So I think they could go get to the latter stage of the Italian Cup. Could I see them winning it? Probably not. Yeah, David was saying here, is there any dates for when the qualifier draw for the All Ireland series? Next Monday. It's going to be uh, next Monday, and then I think the qualifiers, the first round, I think, is the next weekend there, so the June bank holiday from what I believe there. So definitely some some tasty, tasty games potentially on offer there. We might just touch on the result here of the under-20 All-Ireland final. Tyrone 120, Kildare 114. Obviously, Rory Canavan shooting the lights out again. A disappointing one for Kildare, but you can't deny, obviously, Tyrone's uh, underage success that continues to march on. Yeah, well, I just, I just, to be honest, Aaron, we've kind of I've nearly discredited the whole under-20 championship ever since Kildare won it without David Clifford and Sean O'Shea when they were sitting in the sand. So I have no interest at all in the results in that competition. I think it's an indication now, but we already know that there's Toronto producing good players every year and so are Kildare. But while it's good for a county to be there, I think the fact that players, the best players can't play and it means the results for me don't make it relevant, For to be honest with you now. And that's not being harsh on the counties mm. involved, but... I just think if there was an exceptional player at that level, they'd probably be playing senior football. Do you know now, now that is to say, Canavan is an absolutely exceptional player. Don't get me wrong, but I just think that I, I, ever since that, it, it's kind of really it, it's had no interest in the competition since they won. To be honest, no interest in the competition. Hmm. Yeah, no, it is a strange rule, all right. It's definitely a rule that I can't get my head around either. Like it doesn't make sense that you know you can play for um you know the under 20s not play for the seniors and then can't play for the under 20s again it's probably something that's always done uh done backwards but we'll have to see maybe some of those Toronto players might come in uh to the open round of the qualifiers like canavan kieran bogue but we'll obviously uh have to wait and see there i suppose we'll crack on with some of the uh hurling results from the weekend then because there certainly were some um some interesting results right there i mean obviously at limerick who in the end, get a, a draw with Clare. I mean, it was a close enough game going down the war, but what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I suppose it's a result. If you said to Billy or to John Kiley and Brian Lohan in the morning, you get a draw and you both be in the Munster final, they'd both be absolutely delighted with that. They would have taken it, you know. So it's a good result for both counties. The game itself, it was actually played at a high intensity. It was a real championship match, even though there was very little at stake for both teams, really, you know, especially where there was a lot of stake for Clare, there was, wasn't much at stake for Limerick. But I just think, I suppose, for old Hegarty, while it was a soft red card, it'll probably be overturned on the PI. He's not suspended anyway, so I don't think that it's the game to get it like a kind of a, it's what it was essentially that rubber game. And the Munster final now, it's business for Limerick now. This is the business end for Limerick. I, could, I think Limerick are going to win the Munster final rematch between the two teams. And I think at this moment, Limerick are going to win the All Ireland. Yeah, I mean they're definitely they're definitely marching on that way. Obviously, having won three of four games this year, but I suppose a word on Clare. I mean, it was a, another top performance from them, and you know, physically look a, a very strong team now as well. Tony Kelly, as we very well know, has been excellent for Clare the last you know throughout his entire career, really. But you know, there is now other options in there, and Ryan Taylor, John Conlon, Peter Duggan, all these lads. So I mean, Clare are looking very good, and when you look at a lot of people had Waterford maybe as the second best team in the country. They obviously got beat by Cork, which we'll briefly discuss in a minute. But Clare, maybe now you could arguably say are the second best team in the country, or you know, definitely in the mix, anyways. Yeah, well, I I agree with you there. They well, like let's go. The only thing we can really go on is results, and they've 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 achieved the result against Cork, and they've won their troops to the Munster final with a game to spare. I think Waterford will probably beat them next weekend on the basis that Clare has nothing to play for, and Waterford still have a chance of getting through. Do you know? But I think Claire, yeah, job Brian Lohan has done a fantastic job there. Um, he's real again. I suppose keep saying he's a real genuine type of fella as well. With Claire hurling to the core, do you know? And I think Claire as a county, they've really last year they seemed to be showered with a lot of negative off the field press. This year, it's all been different. It's all positive in Claire. It's all very, very good. And they could, I think, they could. They uh, Limerick and Claire in the final would be a very close match, and it could be a rivalry that could could be the story of the summer yet. But if Limerick and Clare can't play in the All Ireland final. Uh, I don't think um, if they can't play in the All Ireland semi final. Aaron, sorry, because mm. they, so they can't play in the All Ireland final. But Clare, now this is not looking ahead to any result or permutation anything. But the, if the losers of the Munster final will likely play the third place team in Leinster, which is likely to be Dublin, the way if if results go to plan, you know. And I think that Clare or Limerick would be very very confident to be in Dublin in the All Ireland quarter final. Yeah, or it's Dublin or the Joe McDonough team, or now that's mm. presuming Dublin come third, which is probably the most likely result. But we're we're looking mm. ahead a lot there. But I, but I'd say now 
both Clare and Limerick would be very fond of it reaching an Ireland semi final. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you would you would have to fancy them uh, against the Dubs going into a, a potential All Ireland quarter final if that is the the result and it may be. But yeah, sixteen points from Tony Kelly on the day. I mean, an absolute freak of nature, really, and just um, a top performance from Clare. I mean, from Limerick, really, as you said, like it was a bit of a dead rubber. So I suppose you can't really look too much into that result. I mean, their their eyes will be very much fixed now on uh, on that Munster final. In Ennis, and like I'd imagine the you know the first time either one of those two counties play in a Munster final since 1995, their first Munster final meeting. So I mean, I'd say the atmosphere for that one is going to be off the charts. Yeah, but it, it's kind of it's a funny one Aaron, because Clare will really want to win a Munster title. Don't get me wrong, they haven't won it in years. But Limerick will their focus is purely on three in a row, in my opinion. Now I'd say Kylie will not admit the same. He'll want to win a Munster title. And I think they probably will win it. But I think Limerick, like if Limerick won a Munster final and lost the All-Ireland semi-final, they'd see it as a disaster of a year. If Clare won a Munster final and lost an All-Ireland semi-final, they'd see it as a very good year, probably winning the first Munster title in 30 years. Do you know what I'm trying to say? It's a different mm. it's a different reward for both counties, do you know? But I think Limerick are... I said before that we would learn a lot about Clare's All-Ireland credentials because if they couldn't beat Limerick at home in a dead rubber game... Without Keane Lynch, I just don't think they'd beat them if Lynch was back fit in a real do or die game for Limerick in Crow Park. Now, I could be wrong, and Clare played very, very well yesterday, but at the moment, I think Limerick are probably probably the better team, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Waterford 119, Cork 222. Huge result for the Rebels. I mean, obviously, a lot of people had written them off coming into this game, including myself, really, because having seen both of their performances against both Limerick and Clare. It was very hard to give them much of a chance going to Walsh Park, but Waterford, very flat, just weren't really up for it at all. But um, look, a huge, huge win for Cork, and it really does blow the, the Munster Championship wide open. But this was the game yesterday that I would really look forward to in the Hurling, to be honest with you, and I was given given a, a good treat. Bush, Bush. Cork, I'm a huge fan of this Cork team. I think for years they've had exceptional hurlers coming through. Now they, just, they, they have a really good forwards. Their speed, they play lovely hurling. They're beautiful to watch on their day. They play, they play well, they, they link well with each other. Everything is lovely about Cork Hurling, but they drive you mad. They're very inconsistent they, and, they're, and they can let teams walk through them and be very, very poor. I was thought they were excellent in the league playing scintillating Hurling. Then they played the usual flaws, came back against Waterford in the final. They made the same mistakes again against Limerick in the All-Ireland, in the first round of Munster, sorry. And then they then they got blown away. No, they got, the, no, they got blown away by player Starch in, in Turtis. Cork put a bit of, bit of a fight towards the end, but they had three bad performances in a row. This is the Cork team yesterday that I know that we, we've all seen, you know, and I think that they're, there's no certainty in life, but I think they will be Tipperary this weekend and get, the, they get come third place in the group. And I think they will win an All-Ireland preliminary quarterfinal against one of Antrim, Carlo Offaly or Kerry. And I think they will win I think at the moment I fancy them to beat the Leinster finalists, the Leinster runners up in the Ireland quarter final. Yeah, and I suppose from a Waterford point of view, I mean, it was very strange watching them because it it didn't look like I was watching Waterford to be honest. Or the Waterford that we've become so accustomed to under Liam Cahill, like a lot of players were relatively quiet. We didn't quite, we haven't quite seen the influence of of Desi Hutchinson, and obviously we've seen Bally Gunner win the the All Ireland club senior hurling championship, but. A lot of those players probably haven't played too big of a role for this Waterford team so far. But it's a strange one, really, isn't it, with them? And it's kind of crazy to believe that they could win their final game and yet they could still be out of the championship. And we all very much had them as a, as a team that could really push Limerick for that All-Ireland this year. Well, I think for a start, Aaron, the Waterford hype was too much. They kind of was hyping up to the core. And the pressure was put on people, on the players themselves, because of that. Do you know, like, they won a league title... And they were the best team. They played excellent in the semi-final and final, right? But apart from that, like there were people saying whoever beat Waterford was definitely going to win the All Ireland and that, like, you know, like um, I suppose it just didn't do the players any good. They were being talked up as the best team. This is definitely going to do. And then it was just all set up for a fall, wasn't it? I just think you know the type of way and the way they played poorly against Tipperary in the first round. I think with a bit more belief, Tipperary might have won that game. They played well in Gaelic grounds, but they still could have been like they were lucky, like Limerick lost Key and Lynch very early. They were missing a few, and they still beat them fairly comfortably, despite the winning margin only being three points at the end. Waterford only scored, they didn't score a point in the last 20 minutes. I think they only got two goals or maybe scored one point, but it was very, very poor finish for Waterford. Power two goals, which is obviously much worth much more. But, 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 and then I suppose yesterday, then Cork just played better. Hurling was a banana skin of a game for Waterford, and it's one that's going to cost them dearly. But 
I don't know. I think hopefully the for Waterford say the players really do respond this weekend and beat Clare, win that match against a Clare team with nothing to play for. Give yourself a chance of getting to the last, last, whatever, last eight, I think it is with the Super Junior teams in the Joe Matonel. But give yourself a chance and see where you go from there. But I think Waterford, look, I suppose, I think just there was probably just too much pressure. And do you know what? Now, this is the thing that I'm going to say, and it's probably a bit of a controversial statement, but I think in the GA, they're, they're seen to, they don't like celebrating competitions which they don't see as the be all and end all do you know like i see in the soccer mm. when teams win the carabao cup they really go mad they hug the goalie everything you know the type of way it's a real sense of emotion in the ga i just saw kerry against mayo they were nearly looked like they would have been ashamed to be seen celebrating the league than kerry nearly that's the feeling i got i was at their last win before this year in 2017 against dublin it was the same they beat they ended dublin's 37 game on unbe- beat unbeaten record or something like that and it was like, oh, sure, who gives it? You know, and it kind of, like, who yeah. gives it? It was just, it was, I just, it's not an actual understand. It's a thing very, very common in the GA. And Waterford seemed to do the same against Cork. They had won their first national title in seven years. And it was the first title for a lot of those players. And it was like, we don't want to be seen to be celebrating this. We're going to recover and get training. And like, you know, what? that was a mistake. Because when you're putting in the savage effort that Waterford have, you need to be getting some sort of reward and camaraderie as a team, as a group. And I don't think Waterford, celebrated their, their league final enough to be honest with you it was a good great achievement for the team and i think it should have been it should have been celebrated more within the camp as opposed to saying this is only a step in some protection yeah it's an interesting interesting point you make all right and i think maybe sometimes it is context maybe a little bit like i suppose when you when you see kerry winning the league at I suppose the main reason I think they didn't celebrate that is obviously as you said their their main heads are probably fixated towards it all Ireland like if it was maybe a different side who came through that game, I'm sure maybe they would have celebrated. It's sort of a it's a hard one to judge. And like say, for example, if it was Man City who won the Carabao Cup and let's say they didn't win it on penalties, let's say they beat Chelsea, what, two, three nil. I don't think they jump around and, and start celebrating in the same way that Liverpool did because it was penalties and context was a little bit different. But I definitely do get the uh, the point that you make there. Well, what about this for a result in the in the Leinster Championship? It was Westmead two fifteen. Wexford 21 points. I mean, for yourself as a Westmead man, I know it's only a draw and I know he didn't win the game, but is this maybe one of the most famous results in uh, Westmead's senior hurling history? I think it's undisputably the best results in the history of Westmead hurling, Aaron, to be honest with you. They had a few good wins in the league before, but nothing like this in championship in anyone's lifetime that I know, to be honest with you. It was a brilliant result. It was a great, but well, the funny thing was, it wasn't even a great Westmead performance. They played much, much better against Kilkenny in the first round. You know, Westmead got a draw against a team who would came top of their group in the league without playing well. Like that is, it's a serious pro sign of progress for Westmead where they've come as a hurling county. They've won five hurling trophies since 2019. Do you know, like it's a really, really, really good improvement in hurling. And Westmead, I think the greatest credit you could give Westmead is that there's a few of those players for Westmead that would have been absolutely have walked onto the Wexford team. They wouldn't even have been disputed that, and loads of teams in Ireland, it's not just Wexford for that reason, the likes of Tommy Doyle, Angus Lark, Killian Doyle, those lads, like just really, really brilliant hurlers. And with a result, Westmead would save it for a long time. Now, it's a bit of a strange one this weekend against Leash. While it might be a disaster for Westmead to lose, Leash traditionally puts huge effort into winning one game a year in these the Wed relegation field, and they always manage to do so. So, if Westmead lose next weekend, I'm not that bothered. They go down to Joe McDonough, are probably going to be favourites to win it next year and win another trophy in Crow Park. The most important thing for Westmead is they're making great progress in Hurling, and that's a real, real sign of a good result. Like I'd have to say I'd much rather be in a position where you got a result against a top team and lost the leash by a point than getting hammered like they should against Wexford by 20 points or 19 points and win one match against Westmead, you know. That, that's my own opinion now maybe it's not good but I think Antrim last year that happens then they had great wins in the league went down and got relegated in championship but they, they're going to probably in both and come straight back up but there certainly hasn't hindered them so I think Cusick Park was good there was real emotion if Joe Fortune managed after the match the Westmead fans were going to the Westmead players with photographs and to get their hurls and jersey signed instead of going to the Wexford stars like Lee Chin and Roy O'Connor who are lovely guys and very very great hurlers don't get me wrong but but Westmead this was a result this was Westmead like when they play Kilkenny People were coming in to watch Kilkenny. Let's not pretend otherwise. Like, you know, Kilkenny are a box office name in town. There should be no reason not to be. Last night, or the Saturday night, people were coming in to watch Westmead. And I honestly thought, gave Westmead a real chance. A lot of lads have verified that. I thought they had a chance of beating that, winning that match. They didn't play well, got a win. And I'm delighted just that one shot I gave him on Twitter there. Derek May Nicholas, he played Leinster Championship Hurling, Liam McCarthy Cup Hurling in 2004 for Westmead. 
and he's the longest serve. He's the only player out of all the 11 Lee McCarthy teams to still be playing 18 years later. And it was fishing that it was his goal that secured Westmead hurling the best result in their history. Yeah, I mean, incredible stuff, really. Most definitely from from Westmead, as you as you mentioned there, and you know, haven't seen too much of them this year, to be honest. But when you do look at those results, like from from what I believe and from what I heard, they were close to Kilkenny for what 50, 60 minutes. Um, and like you see Dublin, for example, which we'll get onto in a minute. I mean, they were blown away by Kilkenny. It's kind of weird how it can work sometimes. Westmead against the Dubs. I mean, they gave Dublin a, a good run for their money as well. So, I mean, clearly there's there's something brewing there. It'll just you know, you kind of hope that they can kick on because we've seen Leash, for example, record one or two kind of, all right, they beat Dublin and then they kind of had a few like near misses against Clare and against Waterford. So you kind of hope that Westmead can can build on this and and make something of it, you know? Yeah, well, I suppose if we're going to get to we get to Dublin second, as you said, but yeah, Westmead has been coming for a long time. They've beaten Westford to Kenny and Dublin underage level. They've had a few poor underage teams, a few very good ones, but there's some serious hurdles being produced and Oliver Knuckles, my uncle and Mullingar are coming very, very well underage. There's underage presence in that zone as well now and a lot of clubs are doing well around the county and it's a good time for Westmead Hurling. Yeah, would you back Wexford to get the job done against Kilkenny? I mean, they'll obviously, if they beat Kilkenny, they will go through because of head-to-head, but um, it's very hard to see how Wexford can can bounce back after such a such a hard result. I know they weren't beaten, but it must feel like a loss in some ways. No, I wouldn't back them. I would no. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think uh, to be fair, I wouldn't like to give Dara Egan too much criticism last year because I think that Wexford missed a lot of wides. I think they had twenty-one wides, and Westmead hit a lot too. But I wouldn't say I wouldn't blame a Wexford manager for that. I think it was just a case that it might not just be good enough for that level from Westford. And I think that there was no Wexford fans. I have to say, to the credit to Wexford fans, and I read one opinion piece, there was none of them. Few were given out or disrespect towards Westmead. I thought Westford were very, very respectful both in their commentary after the match and during the match, everything. So. A credit to Westford, but I think to be honest with you, I don't see them now. I could be wrong, but I don't see. I think Kilkenny will, will do a number on them this weekend. To be honest with you, in Nolan Park. Yeah, and I suppose we were speaking of Kilkenny. There it was three twenty-five, seventeen points. As I said to you, I was watching the the FA Cup final in the in the living room, and uh, I, I flicked over to it was on one of the other screens, and I just seen Kilkenny up by 10, 15 points. Completely walked the other way. I was like, right, well, that's that. Where where. where we're not completing the the clean sweep this weekend, unfortunately. But um, look from a Kilkenny point of view, they they just have this thing over Dublin where no matter Dublin just can't seem to perform against Kilkenny, they can't seem to, to raise their heights, and Kilkenny just have this knack of of beating Dublin by ten plus points. You know, I think that's been you know maybe the fourth or fifth straight result against Dublin where it has been ten plus. Yeah, just to clarify for listener, you're watching that in the living room in your house, weren't you? And not the pub off O'Connell of Street. It was the pub off the, well, uh, the O'Connor Street, right, right, right. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Taking that there, but uh, but um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, no, Kilkenny they they were the better team by a mile against Dublin from what I read in reports. I didn't see the match, but I think now a bit similar to Kerry in the football. This is a team waiting in the long grass. They have been exceptional all year. Look, I'm going to go score two results. They beat Antrim in the league. Narrowly Antrim, it was a probably a banana skin for them. They lost by Tipper to Tipperary away by a point and could have won the match. They beat Leash off the pitch twice in league and championship. Like they beat Waterford in a real game for Kilkenny. They like you know that kind of way. They beat they beat him. Um, I think they beat Wexford in the league. I'm not, not hundred percent sure about that. But no, sorry, they didn't play Wexford in the league. Sorry, I'm I'm talking there wrong there. They beat Dublin off the pitch twice in league and championship. They played very, very well against Cork, who also played very, very well in the other in the league semi final. Do you know they played they were Westmead played probably the best ever performance against Kilkenny and lost by sixteen points. Kenny played very well against Galway. They lost by a point. We're a bit unlucky, and they destroyed Leash and they destroyed Dublin. Now, Kenny are a team that could win in Ireland. The standard of hurling, it's a bit like I compare Kenny to where Kerry were in large parts of the last decade in football. Not complete. Like they're always Kenny and Kerry are very similar. They're always going to be contenders. There's never going to be a bad Kenny team, and they'll always have a real belief in Kenny. They're going to win. Do you know? I think that this is a that they could be a team if Limerick are to be beaten. And this is a bold statement. I think they have the best chance of beating Limerick out of any of the teams left in this year's hurling championship. Yeah, well, I suppose they did. They were the last team to, to beat Limerick in the uh, in the championship in in twenty nineteen. So I suppose they have that uh, won over them. And I think you know there's an old expression in 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 sport. You know, fight. You know, styles make fights and. Maybe Kilkenny just seemed to be able to match Limerick's physicality and work rate all over the pitch. And if those two were to play each other at some point, um, I think it's one that I think a lot of people 
would uh, would definitely buy into. I mean, it does seem like themselves and Galway are maybe going under the radar a little bit. I mean, it was Leash 21 points, Galway 237. I know a very hard game to, to discuss, really, because of how comfortable it was for Galway, really. But, I mean, are either one of them, Galway, Kilkenny, are they going under the radar maybe a little bit? A lot of people looking at Limerick Clare. And I know maybe the standard of Leinster hurling isn't quite at the level of Munster hurling right now, but like Galway beat Kilkenny, let's not forget as well, um, in the in the championship. So it does seem like both of those two are going under the radar a little bit. Yeah, well, I think Galway beat probably funny, it probably going to be a bit contradictory, but I, I kind of fancy Galway to beat Kilkenny in the Leinster final. If it is now, that's probably if the, if both sides met now, Galway it'll be interesting because this should be Dublin should be vulnerable. Like they should be like Lammers for the slaughter after losing by seventeen points at home in front of a big crowd. Kilkenny. That 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 should be. That should be a formality for Galway. But the, in 2019 and 2021, Dublin knocked Galway out of the Leinster Championship in, in 2019 and the All-Ireland Championship, for that matter. And they knocked them out of the Leinster Championship last year. So Galway, and they hammered them in this year's Walsh Cup. So Galway, Dublin have actually been a bogey team for Galway. Do you know? So this is an interesting one for them. Galway should win that game next weekend. Now, I fancy Galway if to win Leinster at the moment. I think you can eat are going to get them in the final. But I'm just going to make one point of Dublin and Wexford, and this is it's probably a broader discussion. Dublin could come third, and with more than likely one of those teams is going to come third, Dublin or Wexford, right? But I don't think that's any good for those counties because they're not going to win in All-Ireland. Both those counties could win a Leinster championship. If, if, if the ball bounced from they could definitely win a Leinster title. Both of them are not going to be All-Ireland contenders. So I just don't think third is going to be good for Wexford or Dublin because I just don't think it's going to really do anything that's going to be good for them you know the type of way i just don't see it as being a good enough year for them i suppose they show for dublin that they may have passed westford i don't see it necessarily as being symbolic of a good year for dublin yeah it's it's a strange one all right most certainly because um especially if like if if you imagine like dublin's results go in their favor and they get beat by galway and then obviously the uh, whichever one of the john mcdonough cup teams ends up playing you know potentially dublin then and the in the qualifiers, I mean, the, the side that comes up from the John McDonough might um, might even fancy their chances because Dublin will have been on the back of, of two heavy defeats. Like, even you're looking at an Antrim going up against the Dubs. I know a lot of people kind of felt last year that, that, that Antrim might give Dublin a, a run for their money and it didn't quite work out that way. And Dublin beat Antrim in the in the league as well, so maybe they have their number. But, like, just looking through some of the John McDonough Cup results just before we finish up, it was Kerry 228. Uh, Offaly 4.23, Carlo 2.25, down 1.19, Mead 3.13, Antrim 7.29. So looks very much between Antrim and Offaly. Carlo still in with a shout there as well. But um, any thoughts on, on them results there? Well, just one thing, Aaron, on the Joe McDonough. I was going to say two things, sorry. The first one is Antrim. If you're Darren Gleeson and you got Dublin or Wexford in Corrigan Park, you'd be very, very confident to cause an upset. Do you know Now, I don't know where any of the other teams beat Dublin and Joe McDonough, but Antrim might. And like I, I'd say, without any disrespect, if you were offered a choice between Cork, Waterford, or Dublin, one of those three teams, I don't think anyone is going to say that they'd pick that they'd pick anyone else. To be honest, you know what I mean? Now that's not being disrespectful to Dublin, and there is has been good work going on in Dublin hurling, but I just don't think they're the level of those other teams. But another thing, Joe McDonough, I, I my calculation is correct. There's four teams in contention to make the Joe McDonough on the last day. Now that's there's three teams playing for one spot because Antrim are already true. But Kerry, if they were to beat Antrim in a, what is a dead rubber game for Antrim have a better score difference than Carlo and Offaly. So if Kerry were to beat Antrim and Carlo were to beat Offaly, then it would, Kerry would be into the final. So that's a real mm. chance for all the teams, you know, type of way. But I think at the moment, it's very much Antrim to lose. Yeah, you're right, actually. Yeah, Kerry on uh, on six points there as well. So it's definitely definitely still in the mix. And uh, it is going to be very intriguing, all right, seeing the, the final games as well as the, the final games in the Leinster and Munster Championship next weekend as well. Well, look... Top man, Connor, appreciate you jumping on. Um, and yeah, cheers for coming on. Much appreciated. No problem at all, Aaron. And thanks to everyone who listened and for having me on. Brilliant, yeah. No bother at all. Yeah, if people could leave a like, subscribe if you're new as well. Helps the, the channel grow, all the rest. And uh, I'll talk to you.